Hi, I'm, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, well, it's time to solve a few problems related to um, laws of science and cosines, which we have just learned. And uh, I would like to start with some illustrative examples of these laws. Um, you see, when I first uh, saw the law of science, or the law of cosines with the same token, I was quite surprised how nicely they look, especially the law of science, quite frankly. Remember? It looks really interesting. Quite cool, actually. And the law of cosines is something like this, which is... Uh, which is some kind of an extension of the Pythagorean theorem, which is beautiful by itself. So, um, let's just check if it really works. I mean, yes, I know we have proved it, but this exercise would really help to better feel how these laws really work. Okay, so what I want to do is to illustrate these laws for um, a couple of triangles which are quite familiar with, uh, to everybody and we definitely know the uh, relationship between their sides and angles, etc. And let's just check for these uh, few um, very known triangles if, if these laws really hold. Okay, so my first triangle is the right triangle with 30 and 60 degrees angles. Now, let's check first the law of cosine, for instance. Now, um, I don't remember the, the values of uh, sines, cosines of many different angles, except one, actually. The only thing which I do remember is this. Because I know that in this triangle, 36 to 90 degrees, the side which is opposite to uh, angle of 30 degrees is half of the hypotenuse. So A is half of C. So if that's true, this is 2A, right? And that's what actually makes the sine of the 30 degree equal to 1 half, because it's A divided by 2A. So that's actually the only theory which I remember, and that helps me to find this value. Everything else, all other angles, I can basically derive from this one. Okay, now, what's the third side? Well, let's use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, if this square plus this square is equal to this square, then B is equal to, well, let's say B squared is equal to square of hypotenuse minus square of this catechus, right? Which is 4A squared minus A squared, which is 3A squared. So B is equal to A square root of 3. Okay, now let's check the, let's say, uh, cosine. Theorem, uh, the law of cosines. Okay. Um, now, obviously, it doesn't really make sense to check the law, law of cosines for um, C equal to hypotenuse because it's really a Pythagorean theorem. Cosine of 90 degrees equal to, 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 to zero, right? So that's fine. Now, let's check it for this line, for, uh, for this side, for instance. So this square plus this square minus two uh, product and the cosine of this should be equal to this square. All right, let's check it out. Square of this is 4a square. Square of this is 3a square minus two product of them, which is 2a times a square root of 3, and times cosine of 30. Okay, what is a cosine of 30? Well, actually you can 
check it from here. It's uh, adjacent catheters divided by hypogenous, which is square root of 3 divided by 2. What is it equal to? This is 7, a square. Now this is 2, and 2 can be reduced. Square root of 3 and square root of 3 is 3, and 2 is 6. And as we see, this is a square of this side. So the law of cosine works fine. Now, how about this side? All right, that's easy. So square of this plus square of this and minus 2 product of these by cosine of 60. OK, a squared plus 4a squared minus 2 times a times 2a and times cosine of 60. Cosine of 60, well, Number one, obviously, you can uh, get it from this because it's an adjacent catheters divided by hypotenuse, which is one half. Or, in other word, uh, in other words, cosine of 60 is the same of sine of uh, the 90 minus 60, which is 30. And sine of 30, I do remember, is one half. So anyway, this is one half. So what do we have? This is five a square minus. Uh, 2 a square, which is 3 a square. Now, 3 a square is exactly the square of this. So, the law of cosine works fine. Now, let's check the law of sine. So, a divided by sine of 30 degree, which is a divided by 1 half, should be equal to this which is a square root of 3 divided by sine of 60. Now, sine of 60 is this divided by this, which is square root of 3 over 2, and should be equal to this divided by sine of this, to a divided by sine of 90 degree, which is 1. Well, let's just, just check. This is equal to 2a, this is equal to 2a, and this is equal to 2a. So the, sign, the, the, law, of cosine, the law of sines holds as well. Fine. Finished with this triangle, and let's go to another familiar triangle, which is 45, 45, and 90 degree, right triangle. Now, using the Pythagorean theorem, well, first of all, since B, since these two angles are 45, this is uh, isosceles triangle, so if this is A, then this is A, and this is, using the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus A squared is 2A squared, so square root would be A, square root of 2. Now, so from here, we can say that sine of 45 degrees equals cosine of 45 degrees equals square root of 2 over 2. Right? It's A divided by square root of A, which is 1 over square root of 2, which is square root of 2 divided by square root of 2, square root of 2 square root of 2 over 2, right? I just multiplied numerator and denominator by square root of 2, so I will have a ra radical uh, on the top as it's really kind of traditional in mathematics. All right, so we've got that. Now let's check. Again, we don't really have to check the uh, law of cosine for a hypotenuse because that's really a Pythagorean theorem. So let's check it for one of these catheters. We just have to check one because they are the same. OK, square of this, which is a squared, plus square of this, which is 2a squared, minus 2 
a times a times square root of 2 times square root of 2 over 2. That's the cosine. So what is it? This is 3a squared. This is square root of 2 square root of 2. 2 square a squared, which is square of this. So log cosine, cosines holds. Now let's check the signs, law of signs. A divided by sine of 45, which is square root of 2 over 2, should be equal to, well, this is exactly the same, now this, A square root of 2 over sine of 90 degree, which is 1. And this is true because this thing is equal to 2a over uh, square root of 2, which is square root of 2a, which is the same as this. So law of cosine, law of cosine, and law of sines um, both hold for this triangle as well. OK. Now, another triangle, which is not exactly um, uh, in the category of right triangles, but very much close to it. Here it is. So let's consider you have a isosceles triangle with 120 degrees on the top. Now, it's isosceles, which means these two angles are the same, and since the total sum should be 180, so this is 30, and this is 30 degrees. Right? 30 plus 30, 60 plus 120, that's 180. So that's the triangle which we um, are given. So let's check if these laws um, hold for this particular triangle. Now, to make our life easier, I will draw um, the altitude, which is the same as the angle bisector and the uh, um, and it's median as well. So um, to check, I will use this is A and this is A. And this is, this is 30, um, this is H. Now, since this is H, this triangle is 30, 60, 90, right? So this is 2H, because H is uh, opposite to 30 degrees angle in the right triangle. And this is 2h as well. Now, what is this? Actually, we already had this in, in the first example. This is h times square root of 3. And this is square root of 3. So, by assigning a length h to um, uh, to an altitude, I basically calculated all other sides of this particular triangle. So I know everything. I know angles, and I know sides, and all I have to do is check this relationship between them. All right, so let's just check it out. For instance, uh, let's just take these two squares, uh, some of them minus two product and, and, and cosine of 120 should be equal to this one, right? Let's check it out. Square of this, which is uh, 4h squared plus square of this minus 2 times 2h times 2h. And what's the cosine of 120? OK, as I said, I don't remember these numbers. So cosine of 120, let's just think about it. Now, this is um, 120, right? And this is 60. Now, cosine is abscissa. So it's this piece. Now, obviously, symmetrically, if I will do 60 here, I will have exactly the same abscissa, but in, in this case it's positive, in this case it's negative. 
So the cosine of 120 is, uh, by absolute value, the same as cosine of 60, but has an opposite sign. Now, what's the cosine of 60? Same as sine of 30, right? Which is 1, 2, 1 half. So this is minus 1 half. So let's multiply it by minus 1 half. So what is it? First of all, minus and minus, so it will be positive. 2 times 2 times 2 and divided by 2, so it will be 4. So it will be 4 and 4 and plus another 4, it will be 12h squared. Okay? Now, how about this one? This is h square root of 3 and this is h square uh, root of 3. So the total length is 2 h square root of 3. Now, what if I will square it? What it will be? It will be 4 h square and 3, which is 12 h square. Exactly the same as this. So the cosine, the, the law of cosines holds in this particular case for this side as being equal to. Well, let's check this side, for instance. Okay. So this square, it's 2h square root of 3 square is 12, as we were talking about. 12h square plus square of this, which is 4h square, minus 2 times this, which is 2h square root of 3, times this, times 2h, and times cosine of 30, which is square root of 3 over 2. Well, let's check what it is. Well, this is 16h squared minus 2 times 2 times 2. It's 8 divided by 2 is 4 and multiplied by 3 which is 12, 4h squared, which is exactly the square of this. So the law of cosines, of cosines um, holds for the side as well. All right, now let's check the signs, law of signs. Now for this, let's just do this. Sine of 30 degrees, we know this is 1 half sine of 120 is, again, sine is ordinate, remember, right? So this is 120, this is 60, this is 120. So if I would do 60 here, these points are symmetrical and they have the same ordinate. So sine of uh, 120 is the same as sine of 60, which is, as we were talking just, you know, five minutes ago, square root of 3 over 2. So, now we are ready to check our law of sines. So, this, which is 2h square root of 3, divided by sine of 120, which is square root of 3 over 2 should be equal to this, which is 2h, divided by sine of 30, which is 1 half. Well, let's check it out. This is reduced, so it's 2h divided by 1 half, and this is 2h divided by 1 half. So it's, it's fine. All right, so we have actually checked the validity of the laws of sines and cosines for three different types of triangles. Well, I think it confirms, I mean, it doesn't prove anything, obviously, but it does confirm that it all makes sense, and the, the, the proof, which was kind of abstract, um, is really kind of applicable, and you understand maybe better, and you feel better that this is the true statement about uh, the triangles, about laws of cosines and sines. 
All right. Now let's uh, solve a simple problem. Let's consider you have an isosceles triangle. And you are given the angle at the base, which is 2 phi. And same thing here, obviously, because it's isosceles. Now, there is a bisector of this angle. Well, this is bisector, so this is obviously phi. And my question is, given the lengths of the base and the angle 2 phi, or phi actually, half of this angle, and the uh, angle at the, at the base, uh, I would like to determine the lengths of this angle bisector AL. Well, let's consider the triangle ABL. We know about this triangle, well, basically enough to determine everything. We know the base, and we know two angles, right? Since, since this is a bisector, this angle is phi. This angle is 2 phi. Angles were given as, uh, 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 angles were congruent. Now, now let's use the uh, law of sines. If this is x, then x divided by sine of 2 phi is equal to C divided by alpha, sine alpha. Now, we know what alpha is, right? Alpha is equal to 180 minus 2 phi and minus phi minus 3 phi, right? So, sine of 180 minus 3 phi, just a second ago we were talking about the 120 degree angle, so the uh, 60 degree, which is supposed to be added to 120 to get 180, uh, has the same sign because it's the same ordinate, right? So, if this is... 3 phi, this is, this is also 3 phi, and this is 180 minus 3 phi. So the ordinates of these are the same. So this is e equal to sine of 3 phi. So we basically have solved everything because since x divided by 2 phi is equal to c divided by sine of 3 phi, from here we find x, which is equal to c times sine of 2 phi divided by sine of 3 phi. That's the answer. And we were using the law of cosines. Well, and a little calculation of this angle, which is really very simple, this one. So that's the solution. So now we have effectively used the law of sine to determine uh, one side of the triangle by uh, another side and two angles at it. That's, that's a simple problem which can be solved with uh, law of science. Okay, the last one. Let's say that you have a triangle These are three angles. And let's say you have one side. The C is given. 
and alpha, beta, and gamma are not given. However, what's given is alpha to beta to gamma is 1 to 3 to 8. So I have a ratio between the size, the measurements, of these angles. So I don't have angles, but, the, but I do have the ratio they are, uh, they are in. So I have a side, AB, which is equal to C, and I have a ratio. Now I have to determine other sides. This and this. A, B. Well, if I knew angles, then I know how to solve this problem. It was just the previous one, right? I'll use the law of, uh, law of science. So how can I find the angles if I know just the ratio between angles? Well, but hey, I do know something else. I know that the sum of these angles is equal to 180 degrees, right? So that's the second condition. So now, basically, we have three unknowns, if you wish, and three equations. This is one, a to b. This is another, b to, to uh, uh, alpha, alpha to beta, to beta. Then beta to gamma is another, and sum of alpha plus beta plus gamma is the third one. So how can I find uh, the values of three different angles knowing these two conditions? Well, very simple. Um, if alpha to beta is 1 to 3, it means that the beta is equal to 3 alpha. Now, if alpha to gamma is 1 to 8, it means gamma is equal to 8 alpha. Right? So I substitute it to this, and I have alpha plus 3 alpha plus 8 alpha equals to 1 agent. This is what? 12. 12 alpha is equal to 1 agent. Alpha is equal to 1 agent divided by 12 is 15. So, I've got this. So, alpha is 15 degrees. Beta is three times as much, which is 45 degrees. And gamma is eight, eight times as much, which is 120 degrees. Okay, so we know all the angles. And since we know the angles, now we can use the law of sines to get to all the sides, because A divided by sine of 15 degrees is equal to C divided by sine of 60, uh, sorry, 120 degrees. Now, this is equal to C divided by, again, the same thing, sine of 120 is equal to sine of 180 minus 120, which is 60, and the sine of 60, we're talking many times before, is square root of 3 divided by 2. From here, I get A is equal to, um, let's multiply by square root of 3, uh, so 2 goes there, so it's 2 square root of 3C over 3. Am I right? I think I'm right. Multiply by square root of 3, I will have 3 here, and square root of 3 here, and 2 goes there, yes. Uh, times sine of 15 degrees. That's my A. Now, B over sine of 45 degrees. So, B is equal to 2 square root of 3C over 3 times sine of 45 degrees is this. So we can reduce this, and I will have uh, c square root of 6 over 3. So 
That's the answer. Uh, actually, I can determine what is a sine of 15 degrees, but let's just uh, not talk about this right now. This is sufficient for now. It's still a number, I mean, obviously. So this is an answer. Um, by the way, if you have in your problem something like a given angle, uh, well, then you can consider the functions of this angle also given, like sine or cosine or tangent or whatever. Um, well, in as much as if you have a, a length of uh, a square, then you also have basically its uh, area, which is the length square. So a function of a known value, uh, a known function, obviously, a known function of a known value is considered to be given as well. All right, so that's the answer, and that's how this particular triangle looks like. Okay, that's it for today. Um, uh, I'm sure I will have much more difficult problems in the future, uh, but as an illustrative example to the laws of sines and cosines, I hope it will do. Thanks very much, and good luck.